What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Steel Mace Nation podcast. My name is Fred Moore. Before we get to today's interview, I want to make a special announcement. We have the War Yoga Workshop coming up at Marshall Strength Training Academy in New Jersey. It's on September 24th. If you're going to sign up, you got to sign up now because I think there's only a few spots left. So go to MarshallStrengthTrainingAcademy.com and sign up. It's a $100 four-hour workshop. So that comes out to $25 an hour to work almost one-on-one with Tom Belinge, the guy who went to Iran to train with all these Eastern-style strength implements. And he's bringing them to New Jersey firsthand so you guys can train with them. So this is a big opportunity. And it's going to be a lot of fun, and I recommend that you sign up quick. Go to MarshallStrengthTrainingAcademy.com and sign up today. Uh, Also, I want to give a shout-out to SleepyMonkeyTrainingAcademy.com. Andrew Emsley, he's my friend. He's been on the podcast. He's a really good coach, and he's a really awesome guy. So if you're in the Pennsylvania area, you can – New Jersey is close, too. You could could go train with him. Go to SleepyMonkeyTrainingAcademy.com. Also, to support this podcast, if you go to freedomstrength.us and use the discount code SMN10 on sandbags, weight vests, and all the other stuff that they sell, a little bit of money comes my way, and I can use that money to offset the cost of this podcast. Yes, I do have costs. I just recorded this particular episode in a studio, which costs money, so any type of uh, purchases you need for fitness, try to use that discount code and it helps. And also uh, go to addictsclub.com for your adjustable Mason club needs. And last but not least, a real terrific website for you to check out. Uh, You might've heard of it. It's steelmacenation.com. Go to steelmacenation.com. Check out what's over there. There's a membership. You could sign up and then you can follow along with all these cool workouts. There's a ton of other stuff that you could check out too. Go to steelmacenation.com. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, listening through this. And we're going to get on with the podcast now. He lives in this town called Byram, in New Jersey, and I'm like, oh, stop. Wow. Like, bro, that's where I live. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, like all the things I had to go through in life, like my, so I was adopted, and then the day before my like ninth birthday, my father dies, right? My adoptive father dies. So my mom gets remarried, and we move up to Florida, or I mean move up to New Jersey. This guy dies, right? And we stay in Persephone. Like all this other stuff starts like, you know, life is happening like all these things. And, you know, I meet my wife and the last home that we looked at was the first one that she wanted to go look at when we were looking to get a house. All right. It's the last one, man. Nobody else bit on this fucking place. So we go there and it's in the same town that this dude lives. I'm living there for years. I don't even know that this guy's there. You could have passed each other. Yeah. I ended up hanging out with him. Wow. And like I met this guy show up. I got a fanny pack on. He's got a fucking fanny pack on. (laughs) And I'm like, it's <laughs> weird, man, because I've never, I've never, I don't know, you know, like, you I don't think, yeah, my mother, you know what I mean? Like, like, I never, I, I've never, like, like, I love my mother, you know what I mean? But like, it's weird looking at somebody that like, looks like you, like, dude, this guy looks exactly like, yeah, me, yeah. Like, sounds like me. Right. But then, you know, he started talking and he's like, oh, I have like fibromyalgia and I'm so tired and I'm yeah. this and I'm that. And I'm like, oh. Uh, this is that fucking worm that's in me that that does this. This is that fucking pencil neck, like kind of like not fucking not what I was. You know what I mean? The thing that I need to get fucking like squashed in my head. Yeah. He's like, you know, your grandfather or you know, be my grandfather is a, is a raging alcoholic. Uh huh. He dro- got lost his license in like the fifties or some shit. Never got it back. Like, cause he had to he had to provide a letter from a doctor saying he was clean and sober and done and drinking. He could never he do it. Fucking do it. And I'm like, dude, no wonder, like, why I was, be, I'd be drinking, and it was like fireworks going off yeah. in my head. And, yeah. You know, my mom would always be like, I didn't raise you to be this way, and I'm like, That's dude, so something in there screaming at you, like, like you should do this. This is great. You yeah. know what I mean? The worm. Yeah. Just, the virus. Dude, it knows it. It's like the, it's like genetic shit, just like leading you down that. T- I didn't even know these people. 
I never met them. I never knew them. Wow. And here's this guy. My father got into a bad car accident as a, as you know, my, my biological father. How old were you when you met him? Just a couple years ago. Okay. But you were already into training and stuff. Yeah. And it's okay. funny because he actually was like, he was, you know, got into a bad car accident, drinking and driving. And then he, I guess he stopped drinking, but he was like a weightlifter, got like big and like all this stuff. And I'm like, Oh, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, it's like all these things lead you down this path, but I don't know this person. Yeah. Like, it's not like my father, like I could follow in your footsteps. I've never even seen his feet right. before. But there's something that was Just still pulling you. pulling you. But what's cool is, is that you already started weight training and stuff. So you already had like that picture in your mind. So you recognize the worm. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's. This is the guy. This is, this is why I fucking want to be like. Like, I don't know if he's a lazy guy, really. Right. But, like, you know, he would always talk about, I don't have any energy. I don't yeah, have yeah, yeah. And, this and you're that. seeing, like, a victim. Yeah. And, I'm like, and you're like, I don't want to be a victim. I identify with that voice in my head. Yes, man. right. Because it's that's. And, you know, my same. mother, you know, raising me, like, if I was having a hard time in sports, she'd be like, we could pull you out. We can get you out of there. And I'd be like, please. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with these kids anymore. They're so, like, you know, yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And, like, dude, it just, like, you yeah, know, my mom she just wanted what was best for me. Like what she wanted me to be comfortable. Happy. Yeah, we're happy. comfortable. Yes, which is our freaking problem, dude. And it's like that. That's what I like spent forever called like that. Listening to the negative thoughts in my head, like yeah. just the loop, yeah, 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 the loop of negative thoughts. Yeah, and it's just crazy, man. You know, like to just to just you gotta you gotta fucking you yeah. gotta get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, because it's like it, it'll just keep growing. Like while you're doing other shit, well, it's just in there doing reps, people working out. People don't know how to get rid of it. So yeah. that's well, that's you, that's the thing though is I don't think you can get rid of it or, or but no, live with it, like you, you, be, well, you be able to say like build like a scar tissue around it and be like okay and it's you like, sit right there and, and it's, shut the fuck up you, you know it's there but you have to be like like conscious to like make the choice mm -hmm. to like it's a choice you know it's a choice to listen to those thoughts it's a choice to let that fucking thing even start talking you know. Yeah. Like yeah. there's like a thing like my buddy like talks about like a committee of like it's like a committee in your head like who's yeah. got the microphone a committee of monkeys you know, dude that's you know what it is is it's like sometimes you catch yourself in these things and what you got to do is have that insight to just fuck it. it's like going in and clicking on a light yeah. and, you know or, or just barging the door and, and going say, what the fuck right, is going on get here get the fuck out of here yeah go out and rake the lawn who the hell like you know I walked away for a minute and this is what happened yeah yeah and like you just it just went to shit well, that's you know? a good analogy it's a, it's what it is you take your eyes off of it and it's like it just it goes wild yeah. And you can't, you can't, you can't let it do that, man. Or else it's like, who knows where you end up? Because you're not in control. You're not, you're not being like, you know, there, present. Yeah. Now. Right. Thinking about what's going on 20 minutes down the road. Or, so, I mean, this is basically big stuff for you, right? Like, yeah, this now, is like this your. Is like, this is like my last, like, probably like the last two years of my life has been like trying to. Sharpen be, that edge. Like yeah, hone man. That in. And just realizing like, you know. I don't like that voice in my head. Well, that voice in your head is also you. Yeah. So you need yeah, to yeah. like. You need to. You're in. You can be in control of that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and you can like you can steer your your internal conversation and realize this is not how you should be. You wouldn't talk to somebody else like this. Why are you talking to yourself like this? Yeah. You know. Let's let's uh, we'll introduce the show and then uh, let you introduce yourself. Like you talk about who you are and everything, but then let's go right into that. What do you want me to hit? What, which like, which, like, I mean, whatever you feel comfortable with. You uh, know, anything, man. I, I don't care. You could repeat whatever you just. I don't care. Uh, but just, I wanna, I want people to hear about, you know, that voice in your head, the negative voice. You can't really just get rid of it. You got to learn live with it. But there's things you can do. Um, you know, that that kind of thing. I think that's a a good, because yeah. I think that's one of your your strengths. Yeah. Uh, mindset wise yeah no definitely you know obviously people can see your fitness videos and they know that's another strength right yeah so i mean i think you can you know this yeah, is to get to know you 100%. that's something we can get into and then i mean if you want to talk about even like being distracted by like internet porn and stuff like that that's cool like manhood stuff i mean that's um you know but wherever definitely. it goes i don't oh, want to yeah, i don't man. want to be like a. let me just i want to put this on uh yeah, ju juice it up, man. So it Put it on as high as possible. Doesn't keep fucking beeping <laughs> how, on me. How high did you have that thing set when you were eating empanadas? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, the <laughs> thing must have been cooking. For <laughs> <Just> you. <laughs> <laughs> did you smell that? Like, obviously, like sometimes I've gotten like insulin in my mouth before, yeah. and it's like, dude, it tastes like like if you could taste a robot. Yeah, like, it's yeah, what robots right. taste like. I've I've smelt it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's got a distinct smell. Like it, it smells like a hospital or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it smells like a hospital. Yeah. Exactly. Like, 
like like a clean hospital robot. Right. <laughs> it's <Yes>. disgusting. Right. <laughs> Why'd you uh, taste it? You just, just no, like I've had like I've, if I had it like on my hand oh, or like okay. something, just kind of like wiped and then like, what yeah. the fuck is that? Because I used to have to do like injections, yeah. you know, and that like, does so it squirt, for you, now, yeah. Right? So you yeah. squirt some out here and there, you get it on you, or like it's just you know, it's just, yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 nasty. Yeah, who knows? Like you know, I guess what it is is what it is, but I don't know what it is. It's freaking saved so many freaking lives, man. It's unbelievable. It's like a miracle that yeah. stuff. It's crazy. Do you want to move a little bit closer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. You're recording? Yeah. All right. Sweet. What's up? Welcome back to the Steel Man Station podcast, everybody. Today we're recording at a shared uh, a shared universe podcast studio in, uh, where are we? Bell Works in uh, Homedale, New Jersey, where uh, I started the podcast with a shared universe in Eatontown. And, um, you know, it's been a lot of fun using the studio. Today, I'm here with Joe Mahoney, who's a New Jersey resident who swings bass. And, um, you know, we decided to meet at the studio to have this awesome conversation we're going to have today. We've been talking a lot already, Joe. Uh, you are the Gundalini yeah. on Instagram. And I've never met a Gundalini before. Uh, I, uh, I thought maybe you would be Italian, but I don't think you are. <laughs> um, but whatever a Gundalini is, you're so far a nice guy. I thought you were going to be a mean guy because goon. But uh, you're a pretty cool guy. We've been talking in the park a lot, a lot. So we got... So much to cover. But why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and how you got into training with you know Mace and and um, well, if you guys go on at Gundalini on Instagram, you'll see what he does. It's very interesting. He works out at, in you know in his yard on equipment and stuff. But welcome to the show. Thanks, uh, bro. Tell us about yourself. Well, I'm Joe Mahoney, and uh, my page is Gundalini on Instagram, and I'll, I guess I start with. Where I came up with that, it was a Saturday, working in uh, the metal shop, and um, I was listening to some. I think it was like Alan Watts, and it just led me down all these other all these other little podcasts and or you know shows or whatever that was on, and uh, it ended up, you know, I was familiar a little bit with like Kundalini, you know, I'd never practiced it or anything like that, and it was you know as far as the definition of what it meant was you know. Like is like the snake lying coiled at the base of your spine and arousing the energy to come up and you know express itself like you know you can express yourself like using that energy, and um, I'm not I'm not a, a yoga practitioner like you know traditionally and uh, so the term goon is you know can also be like an eccentric person and uh, I really just kind of it you know I like playing with words. You know, words are pretty powerful, and I, I feel like, you know, Gundalini was something that, you know, it was, I, people think of, like, you know, like a hench, like a big guy. Yeah, right. Like, you know, I don't, I don't view myself as, like, a mega man or anything like that, but, like, I was like, you know what, there's some goonish behavior that I have, and, like, this <laughs> this is, this makes sense. So I, I looked at it as, like, you know, arousing the uh, the goon energy in your spine, and you know what I mean? Just just letting that snake, just let it ride, man. <laughs> uh, I like that, let it ride, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, the goon is uh, probably... The wild man inside you, uh, but under control somewhat. Is that how you would? Look yeah, at it? I, I, you know, I think it's uh, it, it's more of like a, it's 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 a process. You know, instead of like it, it's a process, and at the same time, like a state of being. Because I mean, I feel like it's it's in there. You know, so you you have it. everybody's got it in them because we can all have behavior that maybe isn't so you know preferable or whatever. But you know, you also think about it like as an ex from the definition of being an eccentric and it's like having you know some like you said like wild you know in terms of like this could go anyway you know and then like it was just just seemed to be like a great a great way of trying to word what i you know what i have going on and it's just what i'm trying to cultivate all right yeah and so you're coaching people right yeah are I you am. are you teaching are they are they the goon squad or are you teaching them to be part of that no i just mentality or you just let them come and train with you and i i honestly i i i like i don't you know i don't i don't have like names for like people like pet names and things like that i i just i just you know hope that people can maybe get some energy off that name and you know if they want to be a goon you know what i mean if that's what gets them fired up then you know that's what you know because i think we all have our own 
definition of what heaven is in our head. You know what I mean? So whatever you could do to find that, to find what you need to, to be, to be where you want to be, then that's, that's what you, you know, that's what I, I want to cultivate and help people realize in themselves. Yeah, well, based upon what we talked about so far, which the audience is going to, you know, get a, a piece of pretty soon, it, it sounds like besides just being able to coach people how to move, how to lift properly, how to swing a mace and all that stuff, you really uh, impressed me a lot so far with your, your thoughts on mindset and manhood and things like that. And um, I'm always trying to push a message, uh, let's call it a public service announcement, if you will, uh, that young men kind of got to like start stepping up. They got to break out of this, uh, this little dream world we're all kind of living in, you know, where they're stuck on their phones and being distracted and things like that. And, um, I, you know, when I talk to a guy like you, you know, where you're like, yeah, you know, we're you know, training and mindset all come and line up. I feel very happy. I feel inspired. I feel like, okay, now the needle is pointing in the right direction. So uh, as a coach, um, you know, how, how can people get in touch with you if they want to train with you, if they want to learn somewhat about your mindset? I, I'm huge on communicating and, and building relationships with people because I, I feel like that's, you know, like social media, right? I mean, you know, this might sound corny, but like, we, we should be social with each other. It shouldn't be a, like a hole that we go hide in, you know, and just like, this is my little thing. I'm just going to, you know, be in here in my own little world. Like, right. I think, you know, it's a, it's a shared space, man, World Wide web. You know what I mean? Like we should be, we should be like using it to express ourselves. you know, and I feel like there's a lot of people that can express themselves in, in negative ways. And, you know, we tend to see a lot of that, you know, through like, the news or like opinions. Somebody's always got like some hot button thing that they want to, you know, they got to say and, and, and to like trigger somebody. Cause you know, it's, 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 it's cheap bait, you know, like to get people to like things or to interact. And like, you know, next thing you know, that stuff's getting shoved to the forefront of people's attention. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that you, you have to like cut that stuff, cut it out of your life. Like when we were out in the parking lot and you were showing me like on the phone and I was, you know, we were talking and people were like, you, you open Instagram and there's the search thing, right? And you don't even have to search for things, but what you're being pushed, what's being pushed to you is, 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 is butts and boobs and, and like just pornographic images, pornographic like jokes and like things that are just like, whoa, like I am not like interested in and this is not what I wanted with my like my interaction that I wanted to have here and like you know you can go in and they call it like sensitivity controls or whatever like I mean you have to look at that as like I'm not a sensitive person but I, I don't need this like I don't need my senses to be like overrun by by these images because that yeah. is not the place to be like there's a time and a place to want to be sexual and like it's not when you're just looking at your phone like looking to like maybe you're looking up like a workout or you want to like find some way to like better yourself or you want to read some like motivational stuff. But the first thing you hit when you open it is like a, a see-through dress and you're like, whoa, what's going on? Like that, that stuff like, pulls you right off. It gets in your head immediately because, you know, we all got that like little lizard brain kind of thing going on in there where, you know, we just look at like, you know, you see something and you're like, oh, my goodness. But like that's like something that I feel so like, you, it just pulls you away from yourself. What your like original intention was. Like when you were, when you were opening that phone and it's, it's, it's too much, you know, it's, we shouldn't be like stimulated in those, those ways, you know, especially unintentionally because it's just absolutely not natural. I'm not saying that looking at a phone is natural, but like the exposure to these things constantly is definitely not natural. And I, I feel like that's, that's a big reason why, you know, it's easy to get lost from, from what your, your destination, you know, yeah. a good destination, you know, or even being able to look at the map because the map, you know, it's cluttered with nonsense sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, you're a young dude and you want to build muscle. You want to maybe play a sport and be more athletic. So you're like, oh, I'm going to train. I'm going to work out. I'm going to eat right. You got all these intentions. Like you're, you're thinking all the right way. Mm -hmm. And of course you're just 
uh, like any other human, you get distracted by stuff. So all this stuff pulls you away from your focus. And then instead of it being like a laser beam, you're just like a, a Scott, uh, shotgun scatter. Mm -hmm. And maybe a few of those BBs are going to hit the target, but the rest are just going to scatter off into the woods. And you don't have that focus anymore. And what does that do to you? I mean, like in the, at the end of the day, if you have these really solid, good goals to have, all these distractions, what, like, what, how, how's this um, interrupting everything? How's it ruining your life? I think it, it puts doubt into you, and the doubt then makes you consider maybe maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe it is a waste of time. Maybe it's it's not the good thing. Yeah, the good things, the things that you want to cultivate. You could you know you can get your quick little you know hit of whatever you're looking at on there. You know, whatever whatever hormone or whatever dumps out into your body when you see whatever you see that is not you know because like the the easy path is is going to lead to a, a hard life you know but the hard path is is, is going to lead to an easier life and it's 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 a super slippery slope and you can you know make those easy choices like really quick and and then you start to doubt like maybe maybe I don't have to like work out maybe I, maybe I shouldn't like maybe I should like put some money into this uh this this webcam girl or something like that like instead of like it, it, like which I've never done but <laughs> like it's like it's it's crazy to to like you go online you look at like fitness people right and like I don't distract myself with other women but like they literally like have those link tree things yeah and like. Go ahead and find me some woman on there that has like, you know, multiple thousands of that doesn't have an OnlyFans. Right. Like it's 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 there, and like that's a distraction. Like you shouldn't you shouldn't like you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't let those things like you know like you have to stay focused on what you're doing. You know, and you have to find a uh, a a source of that that's something that like really resonates with you. And if you're going on and you're looking at all these other things, you're never going to find that source. And you're going to you're going to doubt what you should be doing because you can find this easy, quick release by these these things that are just not not productive. You know, and it's a total time waste and a time suck. And that's that's not what you want to be in. And I feel like if you can, like, you know, like I said, turn on those controls like on your phone and it eliminates those things, you'll find that there's not, you know, there's not violence being pushed to your phone, which is a distraction, a fear builder, things that'll make you, you know, lose sight of where you're at. Because now all of a sudden you're focused on a war that's going on somewhere else. And you're thinking about like how terrible that would be, you know, if that was happening to you and your family. But these things aren't real. Like to us right they're now. Abstract. They're abstract. Yes. It's not happening. It's here not right now. happening in your backyard. Yeah. You can't do. I would never know about it. Yeah. You know, and it, I feel like, you know, you can talk to somebody and they know all the stats about like, you know, the fantasy football and like all these other things. But like, it's literally a fantasy. Yeah. Like you're fantasizing yeah. over something. Like, Do you know your own stats? To, and that's that's where, you know, it's it's I feel like it's time for people to check in with themselves and see like where you're at. Like, you know, and it's hard because you want to look at yourself and say it's it's all good. And it's it's it, typically it's not. You know, not it might not be bad, but it's not it's not where it could be. And, you know, it's it's hard because I feel like, you know, you shouldn't look at it in a way of being down on yourself. Like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm wasting all this time. And but like you just have the realization that I can spend this time in a better way. Like I, there's things that I can cultivate in myself by like changing what I'm looking at or, or not allowing things, like denying access yeah. to your life, like of these things, like these little like, it's like leeches, man. Everything's, everything's energy, you know what I'm saying? And so whatever you're gonna put your energy into is what you're gonna get back. Yeah. And if you're just, you know, throwing it down into a hole somewhere, like it's, you're just, you're not, you're getting empty stuff back. Yeah. Well, I could just listen to you talking and, and, and then I'm just thinking about your videos on Instagram, right? So the other day you posted something. I'm, just, I'm enthralled by what you got going on at your, at your place. All of a sudden you're doing a, a glute ham raise on a glute ham raise machine in your yard, yeah. which I've never – I mean, yeah, sometimes people have a power rack. Sometimes there's a kettlebell. But you have a friggin' glute ham raise machine 
outside. So I'm right away picturing you in the snow doing this shit. And I'm like, all right, this guy is very, very deep into this. And he loves working out outdoors. Um, and you're training all the time. And you train like a hard as hell uh i get tired just watching your videos but now i'm talking to you and i'm seeing like yeah you you enjoy like going down that hard path you like feeling that that scrape from the grind against you and everything how does a person like let's just say they're living the soft cushy life they're in self-denial or on the couch looking at the at the boobies and the butt cheeks and stuff how does a person leave that world and enter into this um, almost like self-denial, but acceptance of the grind. How do you do that? I like What's to, the switch? <laughs> so I like to look at it as like in the head here, you have like the Knights of the Round Table, okay? But you might not have the most chivalrous knights in there right now. So it's kind of like, you know, you leave a room of like, a bunch of just rowdy people and you know you, you got to come back to that room and bust that door open and click the light on and like just you know they're probably going to scatter like cockroaches and you're going to pretend like they were never there and that was never going on but like in reality you're just not in control and that's that's the same thing as being like a victim like a victim mindset and 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 not not realizing like how much like in control you actually are like even if something is like happening like it's not necessarily always happening to you like I, i'm good for like if say say something say i do something and and my wife and i don't like see eye to eye on it or whatever and she or or she could just have a reaction to something completely but i, I i'll take that as like it's me i did something yeah. i what did i do ownership. how could this be happening but n not in like an ownership of like a good way it's like an ownership of like owning my my victim status and being like oh, what did i do how did oh, this happen yes. okay and man that is so gross because like i'm not letting you feel your feelings i'm 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 trying to take your feelings and i'm internalizing your feelings and i'm trying to convince you that your feeling isn't correct and i this wasn't what was supposed to yeah. happen and it's like really a weird spot to be in because like that's gaslighting right when you don't let a person have their yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. And it's, but here I am trying to control something that's completely out of my control. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't, I, I can't have a hand on somebody else's emotions and like all these other things like that are just, it's, it's out of my hands. As long as I'm not doing something that's shitty, right? Like if I'm being like, I, you do have to have ownership over like, you know, if, if you're having behavior that's completely undesirable, but you also have to have like the knowledge and, or the insight, I should say of like, this is, this is not cool behavior you know but like i i have to like i have to realize that i can't i can't like i have to i just have to watch out for myself i have to take care of myself and if i'm doing the right things and taking care of myself like it's going to be good coming out you know it's not and it, it can't be delusional thinking though like you have to be sure yeah. that what you're doing is like you know like the right action right thought you know, like all the like the eightfold path is like a good without going too deep into that like stuff. Like it's like a good gauge of the eightfold path. Yeah. in Buddhism, you know, I can't recite them all off the top of my head, yeah. but it's just basically like right conduct and right okay. thought, right action, like being a it, good person. It's like a checklist that you could refer to to see if you're taking the right actions in your life. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a it, it's right. you know, uh, it's a good place to like like to to really gauge like if like you know are, am i doing like is this right is yeah. this correct yeah. like if, am i because I, I might be causing some suffering in somebody's life if i'm not doing the right thing yeah or i might be causing suffering in my own life if i'm not doing the right thing yeah well a lot of people just they don't know they're like i don't know what to do yeah. they're overwhelmed yeah. they're overwhelmed because they got 10 people in their lives that they're having these various interactions with that may or may not be going well you know something going on at work something going on with their wife or girlfriend or you know, a buddy of theirs said something that was messed up in his mind and now he's taking it the wrong way or whatever. And you're trying to like rectify all these things and you can't, I mean, you get overwhelmed, especially in today's modern world with all the focus on like, um, like it's the very um, selfish kind of world we live in now. It's everything's me, 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 right? And we forget like, well, 
how do we affect the people around us, right? It's a lot that's of what you're talking about. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's like it's like getting entangled in in all these yeah. other all these other things, and it's like it's okay to be involved, you know, and it's okay, but like to 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 like to like help people, and like I think as like men you know, your natural thing is like, you want to fix like, and that's, that, yeah. that would be my intentions is like, I want to fix this. I want to fix, like, I, like if, if you're upset, like I want to fix this. I, we, we got, you know, and the people you love, you really, really want to fix whatever's going on. But sometimes you can't fix stuff and you have to go, like, let that person has to go through some things, yeah. you know, just like yourself, you have to go through some things and like, you have to go through, you know, sometimes it's like really going through the ringer to like to to ring out the stuff that like you don't need, the stuff that doesn't serve you anymore, and the things that are like just a negative, you know, like it's just like a, a sponge just sucking up all the good like you know good quality things that you should be cultivating, or like can even like haven't even discovered you know about yourself because you won't get there because you're just like stuck behind this veil of like illusion. You know, and, and we're the one that's putting it up. It's like, you know, yeah, it's like right. a magician, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, I think that's where a lot of the, if you're trying to correct something, it, that's where it always gets jammed up because we get to that point where we don't want to look past that veil. It's a little too too raw, right? It's too too raw to look at that truth that, oh, this might be, this might be something fucked up that I'm doing mm -hmm. and I need to, uh, be more on, on myself here or whatever. So I had, how would you, um, when it comes to weight training and swinging mace and everything, just fitness in general for, I guess for guys, right? Like maybe girls are different and I don't want to speak for girls, but like, yeah, it might work for girls too, but how does fitness, you know, help us push those veils out of the way so we can be more truthful with things? Well, if you're, uh, best way I could put this is if if I'm grabbing on to a heavy barbell or a heavy mace I mean a barbell you know you can always let go and it's just gonna fall straight down but like if I'm grabbing on to a heavy mace like I got to think about like, I don't even need to think about it I just need to be there I know what I, my action is I know what to do like I've done this dance before I know where I need to be and I can't be you know seven years ago thinking about some bullshit like here I am right now and I got this heavy thing in front of me. This is my task. This is what's in front of me. This is here now in the present moment. And that's where like we really need to be is like not in the past, not considering the future. I mean, you know, you consider a little bit, but like, don't like, live. Like I got to work, stop working out at eight o'clock so I could go eat my food. Yeah, but of that's course. That makes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But I, I can't be thinking about like, you know what if, what if, what right. if, when like, I really need to be here right now. And I'm not always here right now. Yeah. And that's the only reason like I, I, I ended up going down these paths of all these, you know, things exploring so I could figure out how to be right here right now, or else I'll be in like my, my, you know, my past and be like, Oh man, I wish hey, I never. That drains energy, right? Of course. Yeah. Because you're putting it, you're putting energy into that. You're, yeah. You know, you're putting thoughts into that. What do they say? Your brain uses how much of how, like of the, of the glucose in your body. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, most of it. So, you know, that, and there it is, that's energy. So, so then going back to like your phone and Instagram or something like that, if you're in the middle of a workout and you open up Instagram and then you see, um, a, a chick with you know a see-through dress that might distract you enough to where you start thinking about an ex-girlfriend or uh the fact that you don't even have a girlfriend and you're kind of feeling lonely mm -hmm. so now you're like pining away for some chick that's just a video on a screen and you're not you're not really present anymore right because it's not it's, i mean you know that, that might be a real person you're looking at but it's not reality it's not reality it's the witch brick man you're holding the witch brick in your hand and you're just getting you know lost in it that's part of the reason why i, I have a camera separate from my phone you know i just put on some music and the music stays on from the phone you know to a speaker or whatever but that that camera is a tool that all I do is press record, you know, and that's yeah. just why. So I, I, I try not to get distracted because I can definitely get distracted and sidetracked and I'll have all the burners on the stove going and, you know, I'll be off somewhere else, not not paying attention, yeah. you know, and like I it took me a long time to realize that, like, I don't need more time in my day. Like, I just need to manage my time better. Right. And like managing my time starts with like managing what the hell am I doing right now? Yeah. You know, like. 
how many like like it's like I liken it to like you know you can open up your browser on on the internet and you can open up a new tab and a new tab and a new tab. Next thing you know, you got forty eight tabs open and your shit is just bogging down. Yeah, going slow and like man, like you can really bog yourself down if you have all this nonsense and all these files running and open in your head. And that's just with a phone. Never mind, you know, you might be thinking about work, the laundry you got to do. You still got to go food shopping. Yeah. I mean, you just that's just adding on yeah. top of that huge pile. So this is this is one of the things about coaching. Um, you're a coach. I'm a coach. Um, you know, and when I have people come to me, they just seem like what they need is just somebody to focus them most of the time. I mean, you know, once you teach somebody how to swing a mace pretty well. They could they could be off on their own, but like they can't put workouts together. They can't find the time, and I feel like this is one of the bigger things that a coach could be talking about nowadays. Is is you know you need to train, you need to focus, you need to break away from this dream bubble that you're walking in. You got to wake up your sleepy little head, and and you know hiring a coach is a great way to do that because like, I don't know about you, man, but if somebody came to me and they were looking at their phone, I'd be like, okay, you're still paying me, but you're not, you're yeah. not getting anything out of this. Put the fucking phone down. Let's go. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, right there is worth its weight in gold. Right. You know, I think, um, like for me, I was able to go to the gym. Um, I started working out after I got diagnosed, you know, type one diabetic and uh, I feel like I wanted to, like, you know, take control over what I was doing how, with my with my body. How old were you? This was in 2012. So I was 22, somewhere in there, 23. And you weren't working out at the time? You were just... No, I mean, I had a, I had a weight set in my basement. Okay. I had gotten, like, you know, the typical playing football in, in high school and stuff. Like, okay. that, that, that kind of instruction. You yeah. know, just everything was painful lifts. And the deadlifts never felt right. And I was always, you know, smoked for days after. Yeah. And, um, you know, I ended up getting this diagnosis and I, I spent a lot of time I was in the hospital for like two weeks waiting, you know, trying to get my blood sugar under control. And I started researching a lot of things. And I think paleo, like to me, was pretty new. I'd never heard of, you know, not eating things. I never considered not eating carbs. I didn't you know, I think I knew exactly what a carb was. Yeah. And um, it was it was really like eye opening and. I started also, I found like, you know, like bodybuilding.com and like all these websites yeah. and there was like programs and stuff on there. So then I, I'm thinking like, oh, okay, I could just watch these how-to videos and then I could just do these programs. But then next thing you know, I'm doing a program for like a week and then I'm like, oh, this sucks. Let me get a new program. Yeah. This one sucks. Let me, get, let me try this one out. Yeah, we've all done that. Yeah. And I, you know, there's people that can stick to stuff like that. Yeah. And for me, that just wasn't my reality. But I was still having a good time working out with my friend and we'd go to the gym and we were buddies and everything like that. And it was cool. And then uh, one day, you know, I was I was seeking out some help for myself to, um, you know, stop stop smoking some pot and uh, maybe you know overindulging. So I had I had looked up this counseling place, and uh, I pulled up to the address, and I was confused because on the door it was just a it was a bent barbell. And it had, you know, a bunch of plates on the side of it. And, you know, it's just a sticker. And it said, uh, Karini's House of Iron. And I was like, this is, this can't be the right, the right place. Like, this is, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for a counseling center. But this was the address. And I went in and I, I asked and I had talked to the guy and I was early. And to the counselor that was there. And I went out and I investigated the gym. And uh, I had never seen a gym like this before. It was literally looked like a hallway. Like it wasn't a very big place. And uh, it was like, you know, pretty, it wasn't like an LA fitness or something like that where you'd go in and it's decent and like, you know, nice, nice new like equipment and everything. I mean, this was like real deal, like, you know, hundred pound plates were everywhere. Like this was like real, like, you know, a different experience. And I, I feel like it kind of snapped me into reality because like the guys in there were absolutely massive and like strong and like everybody's moving big weight. And I was like, holy shit, I've never seen anything like this in my life, you know? And it really like, it I turned around and there's just this massive man sitting behind this chair and that was Joe Carini. And, uh, you know, I asked him about the gym and he was, you know, in his, in his way, it was, was really short and, and choppy with me. And, and cause he looked at it, you know, as a private gym, it wasn't like, you know, like basically like, what the fuck do you want from me? You know, like I don't have to allow you in here. 
I don't, you don't, you can, you can go and pay your $60 or whatever it is at, at whatever, 20 bucks at, at, at some other little gym, you know, that everybody can join, anybody can join, but like this man can look at you and no, you can't come here. So like, I felt like I had to like, kind of, you know, petition myself to him and like prove to him that you know, I wanted to lift weights in this place. This is like instantly though. Like you just walked into the place yeah. and you're already at this mindset where it's like, oh, I got to prove myself that I could I could be here. It, this is interesting because it's it, you can't fully know the full depth of the place yet. Just got there and you're already at this level where you're trying to like get in there. Yeah, this was this was an environment. Like like you were saying about like like this was an environment that was only conducive to weightlifting. Yeah. Like there was no televisions. There was DHA playing loud ass rock music like nonstop and you know at like max volume. And what about the equipment? Was it all like it was all, like there were some machines in there, not many. It was a lot of mostly free weights. Yeah, there was reverse hypers. Yeah. Um there was uh you know, there was no, there was no pec decks or yeah. anything like that. Was there that. any like posters on the wall? Or yeah, they were all of just like old time strongmen yeah. and uh, you know guys he had trained NFL no athletes Arnold, and stuff. No. Yeah, no, there was Arnold stuff oh, okay. in there. Right. Yeah, it was there. Um, there was guys there that that were into bodybuilding and stuff, but the majority of people that were there were there for like power, like powerlifting. Now, did those people wind up there because they wanted to get counseling on drugs or alcohol? No, it was between. It was a. So there were two separate things. Like you could go and you could you could join his gym as whatever, and then like there was also the other side where you could go for counseling and they would let you like work out for like a half hour at like a different. It was like a. It wasn't the same programming that you would get. And, um, you know, I think that the, the desire for me to want to better myself is what led me there. Yeah. You were, and then I was like, you know, I mean, it's debatable. I probably could have gone to the counseling and everything, but that's not what piqued my interest at that moment. Like I knew what I wanted to do. Did you receive any counseling at all? Or did you start working out? I think I was, I think I went to like two or three of the, of the, the little like hourly meetings or the hour long meetings that they had there. And then, uh, after that, I just really wasn't interested. It wasn't even, it was, you were already past. Yeah, that was, that was, I mean, I'm not saying I cured myself or anything like that by (laughs) any stretch of the means. Like, you know, I had, I had run-ins after that, but I, I, I knew like it, 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 there was so like it the weightlifting like that took took center stage yeah and you know it was it was difficult to like it was you know it was expensive but it was the most like humbling experience of my life like I'll never forget how much were you paying two hundred a month to go there how long ago was this this was I mean it was it had to have been like. It was probably about a year after my diagnosis. Okay, so it was like t- 2013. Yeah, so it's like yeah, so almost 12 years ago. I remember like right before COVID, uh, these CrossFit gyms were charging like 170 bucks a month. And that's, you know, that's when it was at its peak. And, you know, people were just so like willing to pay that. You were paying 200 even before all that. Yeah. I'm just I'm just amazed by that because you're young you're a young dude then and like you I'm sure you're like scraping the money together just to pay it and yeah and it's like you did it you freaking did it and it and it like it bettered your life like it sounds like the minute you walked in the door it, it changed you around yeah it was a exposure to something that I'd never experienced I, I you know I mean and I had I had drifted in and out of there you know because it, it was hard to scrape that money together. Um, you know, I was just welding. Yeah. And um, we were looking, you know, I was looking to, to get married to, you know, it was my then girlfriend, now wife. Yeah, you got to save money for that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, she, uh, I got her pregnant, you know, and then, so that. Good job. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I succeeded. <laughs> and it, um, that, you know, we obviously needed to get a house. Yeah. And, uh, you know, move on in, in that respect. And I was able to, like, like he knew that I was dedicated to this and I was able to pay him in time, like with my efforts, like when he wanted to move the gym to a bigger thing, like I, I spent a lot of time, you know, helping him like I cutting, you know, bringing a grinder to, to, to the place and cutting all the bolts off the ground and 
helping him get you know stuff out of there and helping yeah. him move into the new gym and whatever I could do to like help him, you know, whether it was like cleaning stuff or whatever, I, I didn't, you know, it didn't matter. Like I was willing to do whatever I could because of like the service this guy was providing me was like completely like there was, it was priceless. Yeah. You know, like there was no, I, I, I would have never, I would have never ended up where I am now had I not met Joe Carini. Yeah. That is, that, that is fascinating. And I feel like if I may make the assumption that like you just said it, you wouldn't be where you are now if it wasn't for that. And now you're training in your crazy way. And yeah. I say that with affection, like you're, you work out in your yard on equipment and stuff. And I feel like you would be carrying that torch, you know, right. You're, you're like kind of that guy. Now you're like Joe Carini. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, Listen, Joe, Joe, like, I, 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 big shoes I to fill, right? Yeah, I couldn't, I don't even think I could shine a light to that dude. Like, he, that was, a, that, that, he was a huge influence on my, on my adult life. Like, that was the first time, especially as a man, I understand it's hard to, to look to another guy without, you know, being able to check your ego and say, like, yo, can you show me how to do this? Like, yeah, can yeah. You, I need yeah. some help. Like, yeah. I'm not, can you please show me the way? And, like, it was, like, it was, I, so I used to have ads out, um, on like Google and stuff like that. So like for people to train with me and it was consistently, it was women that would reach out because they wanted, and I was like, man, like, you know, like I appreciate that. It's and everything. the mustache. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I don't even think I had a mustache then. <laughs> it must've just been the beard, but it, you know, it was, it was, I, I wanted to like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how a woman like, an ex I don't have the experience as a woman. You know what I mean? But, like, I can look at a dude and I can recognize in you. Well, you know, it is 2023. It is 2023. So it's, it's a blurry line. <laughs> but I can, you know, I can, like, I can, I can look at a dude and I can identify, you know, with that person and understand, like, what, you know, it's just like a mirror, man. It's like looking in a mirror. And, like, when I see, like, behaviors and stuff, I'm like, yo, look, I get it. But, like, the perfect example is I trained a couple guys online. And the one guy wasn't able to. He, he, There's no way he was gonna gonna, you know, front goblet squat this this 90 pound kettlebell he had. And it was that was that was the the third the third movement in the circuit I had him going on. And I he literally did it like right. You know what I mean? And like, but he had that doubter in his head telling him no. But I'm watching this guy and I'm watching him move and I'm watching how he can move weight. And like, I know what you can do. And I know where what you're experiencing in your head right now because I know that doubter because I have him in my head too. And I needed that from somebody else to like show me like, yo, get out of your head and just 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 move this fucking weight. Like stop, you know. And there was this other guy I worked with. He was he wasn't able to do, you know, so he thought whatever with his with um Zercher squats. And I, I had him up, I think it was like 275. I mean, the most he'd ever done on it was wasn't even his body weight. He was like 185. I had him put on 185. He didn't even do the math to realize that's what was on the bar. And I said, bro, you just did your body weight. And then we put it up to 225 and he did that. And I was like, slap on two more 25s and, 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 you know, like, let's, let's fucking do this thing. Dude, he took it for like six reps. And it's like, these guys are like, man, I never, I would have never, I would have never done this, yeah. you know? And I'm like, like, dude, that's that's the value of of having somebody that knows what they're looking at. Because look, you can you can definitely go down a slip like a road where there's like some charlatans out there that are yeah that don't know what the hell they're teaching you. And like they play like they do, and they put up like a good thing, and they'll regurgitate information, or they'll you know find something online that they can just kind of like like st not steal, but like you know they're just telling you something that somebody else is is, is telling. Them. But they have no idea what they're doing, and they've never put it into practice before. So I think it's it's really important to do your research and find like like this dude when I walked in there and there's pictures of Joe Carini with like you know Tiki Barber and all these like huge NFL athletes like it was like real like I'd never I've never met like celebrities before but like and like I don't watch football but like, these guys would come in and these guys would be like bro do you know who that is and I'm no and they you know they would explain to me like dude he plays for like the Packers so this guy plays for like and I'm like and he's he's over there training. I mean, yeah, like uh, ungodly amounts of weight. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, dude, this is insane. Like, yeah. these guys are, are are athletes. Like, you know, in your head or, like, in movies, you know, you see them, they're all, you know, they'd show them, like, working out, like, themselves. And, like, but that's not how – that's not reality. Like, reality is that these guys are trained by, like, professionals right. that are, like – that know what they're talking about, that have experience, most importantly, with what they're talking about. They're not, they're not showing you something that's just a, a trend and is catchy and, like, ooh, if I do this – 
I'm going to definitely get some likes and some attention and stuff like that. Like, no, man, like I'm me, like I am, I'm, I'm so committed to like physical, like physical culture because I spent my whole life. Like I was like a bunch of like toothpicks put together, man. It was, it was, you know, not what I wanted to be, Yeah. especially when I, I took a job as a bouncer and I was like, why am I getting picked on? Out of all these guys, like I worked out a little bit, but I'm like, why are they so quick to want to start with me? But none of these other dudes. And it was like, man, you got to you got to really put in some like some work and some effort and and really just kind of like like that's where you want to like lose yourself is in that kind of environment and that kind of like, you know, around people. Like if you're going to if you're going to take on a role model, like you want to make sure that like you're not that you're looking at somebody and that person has like what you want. And I don't mean like, you know, possessions, like maybe if that's what you're after, but like like their character and the qualities of their character. Like, is that what you want to be like? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like, do you want to do you want to take marriage advice from the guy that's been like, you know, n- no, no, no shade on people that have been divorced. But like, is that who you want to get marriage advice from the, the five times divorced guy? Like, I, no, yeah. no, you don't. You know what I'm saying? So like, you want to make sure that. You're going to somebody that's like that's really like real and 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 knows what they're talking about, and that's that's what I I, I I you know want people to realize is I'm like 100% committed to to helping and like helping people like realize like what their potential is when it comes to like weightlifting or even if it's like quick little things about mindset and snapping yourself out of the gutter, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. And realizing like, dude, you don't have to pay attention to that shit. Like you can you can you know you can you're in control. Just you know what I mean? Like just grab onto the barbell, go to town. <laughs> right. You know what yeah. I'm I think, I think, you know, you just indicated that earlier. You had the guy lifting way more weight than he thought he could. Um, and that it's, that's a mindset, a placebo effect, whatever you or coaches around the world, uh, do that all the time. They just kind of show they believe in their, they, you know, you gotta have somebody believe in you and you can't always just be yourself. You're always going to put up your veils of deception. You're always going to, uh, self, you know, doubt and do all these things. We all do it. And it's always great when you have somebody on the outside looking at you for really what you are with, with all that bullshit left to the side and saying, no, no, you, you got this. And I mean, you see it all the time. You, you see it on the fire department where, where a chief or a captain tells a younger guy like, yeah, you could do that or you could do this. And then they go and do it. And then you see the confidence build and everything. And this is like building men. It's building, um, manhood. And I, and I really think it's like a service that our society is lacking. We need more people doing what you're doing and talking the way you're talking. It's, it's, it's amazing stuff and it's raw and it's simple when you really get down to it. I I would say that what we're talking about right now is just, you know, being honest with yourself and being honest with the world around you and stepping up and just friggin' doing certain things, checking those boxes along the way. No, absolutely. Yeah. So that, that's that's great. I, you know, um, great advice that you have there and everything. Um, we didn't touch on the fact that you make bases. Yeah. Uh, you're making me one, yes. and and it's gonna be uh, you're hand delivering it to me. Yes. Yes. Um, on uh, September twenty fifth, twenty fourth, twenty fourth. Yeah, we're going to be doing the War Yoga Workshop. Yeah, Tom dude. Belin just coming down from Connecticut. You guys are friends. Um, and, yeah, this is going to be great because I did get to meet him in person. I went and trained Muay Thai with him. That's great. And now I got to meet you. And uh, But, yeah, so what, what kind of maces do you make? We got about 10 minutes. Uh, I just wanted to make sure people know that they could buy maces off of you. Yeah, definitely. I um, So, you know, I like – steel maces are cool. Um, I feel like that's like a good way to get like introduced to things. You can pick them up for like relatively cheap on like Amazon or something like that. Um, I mean, you can also make your own maces. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. Um, but you weld, but yeah. So what I've done is I've taken steel, like, you know, pipe or tube and, uh, I make them loadable so you can, you can advance with just one tool. Um, you can also put plates on the bottom of them and uh, really increase the weight, you know, quickly. You know, if you say you fill it up with whatever and you, you want more out of it, like, well, there's more, you know, there's, there's always more in the tank. And uh, it's, you can also use them as a hammer, you know, it's because it's, 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 it's completely adaptable to whatever you're looking for. And I feel like, you know, the wood handle goes, because keeping the weight out of the handle, 
it keeps all the weight in the head, which makes it a much more honest feeling. And, you know, with the weight that you have on there, because like the overall, the overall weight of like a steel mace, some of that's, some of that's in the handle and that makes it a little bit, you know, not deceptive, but it's easier to pull it over because, you know, it's not all in the head. And then you have, if you have all the weight in the head way out here, you know, the, the, the physics tells us when it's on the end of a stick, it's way heavier out on the end. Right. So I think that that's like really important. I mean, it translates a little bit with the steel maces, but something that's like something like real deal is, is like with the weight out on the end like that, like that's really what you, what you should be after, you know, like get, go ahead, get your foot in the door with something else or like maybe a sledgehammer or something like that. They work great, but, um, something that's loadable so you can progress. Um, I mean like mine that I have, I had it loaded up to 60 pounds with, uh, three eighths chain on the inside and a couple plates on the outside. And then as soon as I got done swinging it, you know, the next day I was able to just take the chains out, load them up on the barbell. And now I have chains hanging off my barbell to, right. to increase stimulus there. So it's like really, you know, so I don't have to have like a million things laying around. Like one tool can get a lot of things done. Like yeah. those chains are dual purpose. The mace is like more than capable of doing a lot of things. Because well, how, how is this mace made? that you can put chain in there so the tube i have is uh it's like a eight inch piece of pipe and it's probably i don't know a foot long foot and a half long and there's a uh caps on both ends one cap it has a um like a pipe to receive the, the dowel and then the other side i have uh a hole and a cap that goes over the hole and uh, you can just fill it up. Oh, okay. So it's just like a big, it's almost like a trash a, a, a trash can lid, and it comes off. Yeah, yeah. And you just kind of coil, let, yeah. let the chain drop in. I don't in. have hinges or anything like that on it, because I don't I don't really trust that. I have, right. it's it's, bolt, it's bolted. Yeah. So, like, I mean. How many bolts? Like four of them? Four. Okay. Yeah, and they just, they just screw down, tighten down, because, like, you know, I don't, it's, as, as like, crazy as some of the workouts and stuff look, like, I'm, I'm like, big on safety because, like, I don't want to get injured. Sure. You know what yeah. I mean? And, like, Nobody slinging, is. like, weight out on the end like that. Like, you know, it's a really ballistic movement. Like, that, it comes in. Like, I've gotten smacked by it before. And it's like a freight train. Like, you know, it's not yeah. it's not preferred. Yeah. And, like, you know, I, I want it to – I don't want, like, weight, like, flinging out the end. You know, like, I mean, look at, like, when people have, like, weights on a barbell and they, like, go sideways or, like, something slips off. Like, dude, that's violent when it goes wild. Yeah. You know, like, the counter, like, it just goes crazy. So, like, safety is, like, really important. And I feel like that also ties into why you should get somebody to coach you, especially on something that's so out of the scope of, like, what training is here in, like, the Western society – as compared to like societies that grew up with these types of like rotational movements and like all the things that you can do. And it's also cool coming from a perspective of traditional, you know, barbell weightlifting and like the things that I've like put together that how you can use these maces. And I mean, like, you know, I show stuff on the internet, but I don't show like, you know, like the bread and butter of like what really go, like there's a lot that like to do with these things like it's much more than swings it's much more than just smacking the tire and stuff like that like there's a lot that you can do and it's it's a really good training tool and it, it ties in well to traditional weightlifting and it's done nothing but like further where i'm at like with 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 really any endeavor like when it comes to being like physical like working you know um i i train some guys that are uh, firefighters and like it's, it's a tool that you can use in such a way that you're not going to be, I mean, you can, you can beat yourself up and be, you know, hurting the next day, but like, it's something that's like really adaptable to where you can like, if your job requires you to do something physical and it's literally can be like, like your life on the line. Like, it's really important that you have somebody that's knowledgeable that can, can not have you completely debilitated the next day. Right. And all of a sudden you have some, some crazy emergency you have to respond to. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, thank you for saying that because that's been my message um, to guys I work with and everything. You know, they they'll go and they'll bench press or something, and they don't even bench press all the time. And then and then they're like their chest is destroyed, their shoulders are destroyed. You know, it, they're they're beat up, they're tired, and uh, then they can't really you know throw ladders and they can't really you know operate chainsaws and stuff like that. Whereas this type of training, that's why I do it. I mean, it's yeah. it's helped me in my career. So what do the guys that you train, the firefighters, I mean, just real briefly, what do they, you know, what do they say about it? What do they like about it? Just, you know, from their, from their heart. Well, the, 
the the most standout thing is they've never been pushed like this way before because like you know you see the videos and clips and stuff and it's like you know 30 seconds a minute whatever of whatever i have going on at the time and uh like once they like get the whole picture it becomes like like the guys would say like no i'm good i'm strong i'm like like but I, I I tend to give like a lot of gas and very little breaks, you know, because that's that's important. I think like if you can you know go like balls to the wall for like a half hour, I mean not like straight. Yeah, you know, there's just some breaks in there, but like it's really important to like like to be able to build that because I mean you know what do you? It's not like you're fighting a fire and it's gonna take five minutes. Right. Like you don't exactly. know how long you're gonna be out there. You don't. And right. like if you just have that gas tank and the engine like behind the gas tank yep. to like to be able to 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 function and do these things and like you know I also throw in some other practices that I I don't necessarily like you know not, I don't give like dietary advice per se but like you know the things that work for me like you know some intermittent fasting so like being able to work out while you're hungry yep. you know like. Or, or anything, tired, a little bit sore. You know, I got kids. Or, like, in bad weather or something. Everything, yeah. man. And that's right. why, like, I have, like, my little, uh, I guess you call it, like, a tagline. is like, unconditional strength. Like, yeah, it's unconventional, but it's unconditional. Like, I don't give a shit yeah, I love it, what man. the weather is, what we're doing, how you're feeling. Like, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're injured, yeah, obviously we're not going whatever. But, like, it doesn't matter. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, the, like, in reality, like, if you're able to, like, wake up, like, dude, opening your eyes is the call to action. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. what action are you going to take when you get that call? Are you going to fucking hit the snooze and lay back down? Or are you going to go, uh, this 15 minutes was all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, like, it's okay. Like, it's, it's, it's not, it's okay to yourself. You can okay that to yourself. But, you know, it's a little bit different when you got somebody there going, like, yo, come on. Like, you know, enough, like, fucking talking to me. Like, get up. Yeah. Like, you got to, you got to, you got to do it's, some more. There's yeah. more to this. Yeah. Because, you're, you know, it's a service. And I'm not going to let you get away. You know, I want to, I'm going to provide you this service. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Whether like, you like it or not. You're getting served. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, and I, I feel like that's something that people need to sometimes be taken by the hand and dragged through the shit. They do. They do. And because, Absolutely. you know, we all do. Yeah. I, I 100% agree. Do. Yeah. I, I love it, man. That's, that's, uh, you, you know, your, your testimony to the training and everything, um, it goes a long way. You know, uh, like I say on the podcast all the time, you know, we don't, have people actually doing testing like in a scientific way or we, we just know what we know so many people such as yourself myself you know we've been on the podcast on the mic talking about this training how it works how it ties into life how it fits into different jobs and stuff and hands down it's always coming back with this type of uh mm -hmm. thing so you know thank you for you know, bringing your knowledge and everything would be great to have you come back. Uh, there's so much more we could talk about, like, uh, you know, just to, just to talk about Eastern style training versus Western style training, which has been a topic on here before. But who can get enough of that? So, yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks Appreciate it. No, I, I, this was a great experience. My first time doing something like this. And it's it was really cool. It seemed like it was like no problem for you, like your thousandth time. Uh, I, I, you're I, like a you're a natural. I loved it, man. This is this is this is really cool. I really appreciate it. So yeah, man. Thanks a lot. It's for great it. having you. Thanks everybody for tuning into this one. Uh, make sure you, if you want to go to the uh, Tom Belage workshop, War Yoga, uh, go to MarshallStrengthTrainingAcademy.com and sign up. Thank you, a shared universe, for uh, having us on and. That's it. See you later.